We are so glad you took the time to dig us up. So, let's get to the wooden stake point, shall we, my dear fiends? <laughs> Welcome to Monster Magazine Weekly. Today we have a fantastic interview with little Eddie Monster, Butch Patrick. But before we get there, let's talk about what's going on today in monster movie history. September 20th, 1940. Universal makes a sequel, well not quite a sequel, to The Mummy. It's not a sequel because it doesn't continue the storyline from the 32 film. And it doesn't even feature any of the same characters, except for the Pharaoh. This was the first of four Mummy movies starring Chorus the Mummy. The films are The Mummy's Hand, The Mummy's Tomb, The Mummy's Ghost, The Mummy's Curse. Tom Tyler is Chorus in the first film, The Mummy's Hand. The other three films is Lon Chaney Jr. Wow, the Mummy movies, the Chorus Mummy film um, series is just uh, a really fun ride. If you haven't saw, uh, if you haven't seen those um, four films, please check them out. Really, really worth your time. Speaking of worth your time, uh, I'm going to take a moment to tell you about what's coming up in October, and that is Monster Magazine number two, the creature from the Black Lagoon issue. Yes, we are celebrating the creature and all of his clones and all this fun stuff, and that will be out in October. The cover for the magazine looks fantastic so far. Artist Ricky Blaylock is working on it currently. I would show you a clip of it, but this is an audio podcast, so there's no clip to be seen. <laughs> now, as for issue number one, it's still going to be available in all three forms. The $3.99, which is the digital edition. It's also the the um, most affordable uh, for those who are tied on a budget. Then we have the seven, is it $5.99? $5.99 print version, which is our budget version, available at lulu.com. And the deluxe version, if you will, this is seven ninety nine. It is autographed and mailed straight to you. And um, with the autographed ones, there is a little bit of time it takes to get from the printer to us for us all to sign it and ship it back to you. So if you do order that one, please be patient with us. We're doing the best we can. There's only four of us and one of us is in New York. So it kind of makes things a little bit hard to do. And a gigantic shout out goes out to Midnight Monster Party on YouTube. Good old Slim. He said some good things about us and we didn't have to pay him that much at all to do it. Just kidding. Thank you so much, Slim, for doing that. We really appreciate it. Spider Island Slim. And you can look up Midnight Monster Party on YouTube and watch his videos and have a great time. I would suggest even like getting some snacks, some drinks all your friends around the TV set and just sit back and enjoy the show and recently he did an episode about He-Man action figures Masters of the Universe action figures and um, if you grew up with those or your kids are playing with your Masters of the Universe figures I would really recommend uh, you checking those videos out The Midnight Monster Party on YouTube Ha! <laughs> And now, as promised, our interview with Little Eddie Munster, Butch Patrick. Ladies and gentlemen, we're joined by Little Eddie Munster, all grown up, Butch Patrick. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule and talking with us today. Not a problem. I, my pleasure, and I hope that everyone enjoys it. Before we begin, we all grew up watching the Munsters, and, and thanks to repeats, almost every kid in America knows the show. Before you got on the Munsters, you uh, were already on television. You'd been uh, acting since you were seven years old. I read that you got your start because of a photo shoot for your little sister. That's correct. I just went along for the ride, and at the end of the shoot, he thought I had a good look at being a photographer. He took a couple pictures of me. One of the pictures put, he put in his window on his uh, at his studio in Hollywood Boulevard, where the director uh, noticed it, uh, sought me down, and had me come in for an interview where he hired me with no experience necessary for a little six-week B movie role, which turned out to be my uh, my starter. 
And that was the two little bears with Eddie Albert, right? And Jane Wyatt, Soupy Sales, and Brenda Lee. Yeah, yes, great. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> now, after that, you, you did some other TV shows, including General Hospital. I, I want to know how you went from General Hospital to the Monsters. How did that happen? Well, they just, whenever you need a kid, you know, General Hospital, Dr. Hardy's girlfriend had a son, but that turned out to be me. And then I went over to the Real McCoys, where they resurrected the show without, uh, Luke didn't have a wife or a kid or anything. The girls and the women were all gone, so they, uh, they needed a love interest for Luke, and they had me be the son. Of a, of a widow who inherited the farm next door. So there I am again, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, after the Monsters, you did some Disney flicks, and then you went on to My Three Sons for a little while. Then you went to another childhood favorite of mine, which was Sid Marty Cross Lidsville with uh, Charles Nelson Riley and Billy Hayes. What was it like working with Charles Nelson Riley and Billy Hayes? It had to be a blast. It was a fun. It was a fun summer. Uh, Charles was a handful, as you might expect. He was very <laughs> funny and. He hated the makeup, and I told him to quit, quit whining. I had on makeup for two years. Billy Hayes was uh, from Puppet Stuff, so she knew the crop camp very well, and all of the little people in the hat had been working with the crops. But I knew most of them from being either my stunt doubles or my stand-ins as I was a kid actor. And in Hollywood, they don't have kids stand-in for other kids. So over the years, I got to know most of the little people at one time or another. Oh, wow, that's neat. Was it around this time that you started playing bass guitar? The, the kind of, there's a little bit of confusion there. I, I do have a bass, and I, and I did play it, but I wasn't, any very, I wasn't very good at it. I was not professional level. It was more of a hobby. And uh, we just included it when um, we did whatever happened to Eddie in the 80s. My producer actually played the bass. I just kind of faked it. And oh. my, uh, my guitar player actually sang the lyrics, although I wrote the lyrics, and I was involved in the production. Uh, I kind of did the Munster Manili thing where I lip synced and uh, faked the bass at the same time. <laughs> Oh, man. When that video came on, my, my dad and all of us were around the TV, and we just had such a good time watching it. Another thing, I was watching a video where you were uh, looking at some funny cars and stuff, and you had mentioned, or unless I misunderstood, that you had uh, thought about becoming a funny car racer at some point. I, I, it entered my mind. A, a senior in high school was working for Roland Leong, uh, who was a very famous owner back then, when Larry Reyes was the driver. We were hanging around the drag spot, and I did want to get into racing. Unfortunately, I just didn't really have the the, uh, the ball, so to speak, the cojones to drive a funny car, and then it was much more expensive than I anticipated. So I just wound up being a fan, but I do, I do know a lot of funny car owners for racing over the years. Also in the video, you had mentioned that you had a 69 Mach 1. Yeah, that was my first car. <laughs> Sweet. My first car was a 74 Pinto. True story. <laughs> <laughs> And you survived. Yes, it didn't blow up. I love the Munsters tribute cars, and they look awesome. Uh, the Munster coach looks pretty much the same, but I noticed that the Dragula uh, looked a little different. And on one of the videos, you had mentioned that the Dragula had a bit was a little bit wider. For uh, yeah, the gentleman, the gentleman that built it was a little bit wider, and he wanted a Chevy in there, so he put a Chevy small block 400. It's built a little bigger, uh, but it's also the version of Herman uh, from the Buster Co-host movie where it doesn't have a canopy like the one that the Hot Rod Herman episode. This one was built like the uh, the movie version. Oh, cool. The Our cover artist, Ricky Blaylock, he had to work today, so he's not able to ask this question, but he wanted to know, how does the Munster coach and the Dragula, how do they handle when you're driving them? Are they... they handle fine. The, dra the Dragula, the coach of the dra Jaguar, Jaguar suspension. Very beefy and very comfortable. The the uh, Dragula is a uh, solid axle front end with no suspension in the rear, so it, it, it bounces pretty hard. I also saw a video from uh, Dr. Paul Bearer's uh, channel where the Munster coach went against Paul Bearer's hearse, and that yes, was, that, that was yeah, cool. That was <laughs> now, since he has a YouTube channel, I know you do. Okay, Munster's events, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, that, you can see cool videos of the cars and uh, yeah. appearances and things of this nature. This, I think it's this weekend, you're going to be at the Spa Con in uh, Hot Springs, Arkansas? I am here as we speak, that's correct. All right. And then you're off to Gearhead. Uh, the Gearhead Invasion in St. Louis, uh, Missouri for the 29th. I found it on Butch Patrick's Munsters.com website. This site has cool goodies about the show and where Butch and the Munster cars will be appearing. Also on this website, you can get the Munster Memories Mini Coffin Table Book, and it can be viewed and purchased on the website on the shop section of the page. Butch Patrick, this is probably one of the craziest interviews you've ever done, and you're a good man for taking time to talk to me today. Thank you so much. My pleasure, and uh, enjoy the, the, the websites and everything. I look forward to talking to you again.
Bye bye. Bye bye. Have you recently lost interest in your favorite comic heroes? Do the current stories make you feel bored, restless, even lethargic? Are you reading back issues out of the 50 cent bin more often than not? Friends, you are not alone. There are thousands just like you, and the cure is Devil Bat. Devil Bat is a 48 page adventure comic by Vance Capley, released by Visual Comics and available through Lulu.com. Side effects include lack of sleep, increased adrenaline, antsiness for the next story, and really, really wanting to buy more Devil Bat merchandise. Ask your comic shop if Devil Bat is available for you, or get your copy at lulu.com. Isn't it time for good comics again? Let Devil Bat start you on that journey today. <laughs> Issue 2, May 31st, from Visual Comics, available at Lulu.com.